Hello, my name is Ram and welcome to another video of Matuklasan. And in this video, we'll talk about the fundamentals of hypothesis testing. A statistical hypothesis is a conjecture about a population parameter. This conjecture can be a theory, a claim, or an assertion, and may or may not be true. For example, the manager of a fast food restaurant wants to determine whether the average waiting time to place an order has changed in the past month from its previous average value of 5.2 minutes. So our initial hypothesis in this example is that the average waiting time to place an order may be different from 5.2 minutes. There are two types of hypothesis, the null and alternative. The null hypothesis, denoted by h sub 0, states that there is no difference between a parameter and a specific value, or that there is no difference between two parameters. In the previous example, the null hypothesis can be written this way, and this Greek letter mu represents the population parameter, or in this case, the population mean. It's equal to 5.2 minutes because the null hypothesis states that there is no significant difference between the parameter and a specific value. In other words, the population mean is not different from the previous value of 5.2 minutes. On the other hand, the alternative hypothesis, denoted by h sub 1 or h sub a, states a specific difference between a parameter and a specific value, or states that there is a difference between two parameters. In the same example, instead of saying the parameter or the population mean is equal to 5.2 minutes, we say the population mean is different from the previous value of 5.2 minutes. There are other ways to write the null and alternative hypothesis. In this example, the manager of the Castor Resort Hotel stated that the average guest bill for the weekend is 15,000 pesos or less. A member of the hotel's accounting staff noticed that the total charges for guest bills have been increasing in recent months. That is why the accountant will use a sample of weekend guest bills to test the manager's claim. This part of the paragraph tells us that the population mean could be equal to 15,000 or less than 15,000 pesos. And uh, the part here in this sentence tells us that the population mean is greater than 15,000 pesos. So if we're trying to identify the null hypothesis, it should be this part. So the null hypothesis should be written as mu less than or equal to 15,000 pesos, while the alternative hypothesis is mu greater than 15,000 pesos. Note that I chose this less than or equal to 15,000 pesos as our null hypothesis because we're just investigating if there is an increase or not. So if will be greater than 15,000 pesos, then there is a significant difference. But if it's just less than or equal to, it's just the same or there is no significant difference. So as long as you see this part is equal to a particular value, it's always the null hypothesis. That is why some statisticians just write this null hypothesis as equal to. So you can also use this as our, your, as your null hypothesis. But since less was stated here, I included less than. For some instances, identifying the claim is important. So in this case, since we are claiming or the manager is claiming that the average guest bill is less or equal to 15,000, then the claim is the null hypothesis. The null and alternative hypothesis are stated together. We can always write the null hypothesis using the equal sign because most professional journals write it this way. And when we test the null hypothesis, the assumption is that the mean, proportion, or standard deviation is equal to a given specific value. If the alternative hypothesis states that the population parameter is not equal to specific value, it's called two-tailed test. If the alternative is greater than, it's called right-tailed test. While if it's less than, 
its left tail test. We will discuss these types of tests further later in this video. To state hypothesis correctly, researchers must translate the conjecture or claim from words into mathematical symbols. Here are the common phrases that we use in hypothesis testing. Let's try this example. For each conjecture, state the null and alternative hypothesis. In number 1, the average age of customers in a cinema is 19.7 years. We're just concerned with the alternative hypothesis because the null hypothesis is always equal, right? So since there was no mention of the word greater than and less than, therefore the alternative hypothesis must be not equal to 19.7 years. In number two, the average score of a college basketball game is less than 80 points. So since less than was mentioned, the alternative hypothesis is less than 80 points. In number three, the average weight loss for a sample of people who exercise 30 minutes per day for eight weeks is 15 kilograms. Like in number one, the alternative hypothesis for this one is not equal to 15 kilograms. Here in number 4, the average age of accountants is greater than 21.3 years. So this is greater than, so the alternative hypothesis must be greater than 21.3 years. And in number 5, the average production of mangoes in Zambales is 12,000 kilograms per hectare. So, like in number 1, the alternative hypo hypothesis must be not equal to 12,000 kilograms. In a study, only one of these two is correct. That is why we do the hypothesis testing. This is a decision-making process for evaluating claims about a population. And the three methods used to test hypothesis are the critical value method, the p-value method, and the confidence interval method. In this video, we'll only discuss the critical value and the p-value method for this is reserved for another video. One of the important steps in hypothesis testing is identifying the appropriate statistical test wherein we use the data obtained from a sample to make a decision about whether or not the null hypothesis should be rejected. Some examples are t-test, z-test, chi-square analysis of variance, and so on. The numerical value obtained from a statistical test is called the test value. In reality, the null hypothesis may or may not be true and a decision is made to reject or not to reject it on the basis of the data obtained from a sample. And there are four possible outcomes for this situation. Notice that in this matrix, there are two possibilities for correct decision and two possibilities for an incorrect decision. A type 1 error occurs if one rejects the null hypothesis when it is true and type 2 error occurs if one does not reject the null hypothesis when it is false. The level of significance is the maximum probability of committing a type 1 or type 2 error. So we use Greek letter alpha to denote the probability of type 1 error and we use beta to denote the probability of type 2 error. The typical significance levels are 0 0.1, 0 0.05, and 0 0.01. So when the alpha level is 0 0.05, there is a 5% chance of rejecting a true null hypothesis. The sampling distribution of the test value is divided into two regions. A region of rejection, sometimes called critical region, and the region of non-rejection or sometimes called non-critical region. And the value that separates the critical region from the non-critical region is called the critical value. If the test value falls into the region of non-rejection, we do not reject the null hypothesis. On the other hand, if the test value falls into the rejection region, then we reject the null hypothesis. The critical and non-critical region can also be determined using the type of tests. As mentioned earlier, we have the one-tailed test and the two-tailed test. 
In total deaths, we have two critical regions on the extreme right and on the extreme left. And the null hypothesis is rejected when the test value is in either of these two critical regions. In a one-tailed test, it indicates that the null hypothesis should be rejected when the test value is in the critical region of one of the sides in the mean. So if it's a left-tailed test, then it will be rejected if it's on the leftmost or extreme part of the distribution. While here on the right-tailed test, the critical region is on the rightmost part of the distribution. If you want to test the hypothesis using the critical value method, you can use these general steps. First, you need to state the hypothesis and identify the claim if necessary. Second, you need to choose the level of significance, sample size, and statistical tests because these values determine our critical value and the type of this distribution that we're going to use. After finding the critical value, you need to compute for the test value. And you can make a decision by comparing the critical value and the test value. Another way to test the hypothesis is the p-value method. The p-value or observed level of significance is the probability of getting a test statistic equal to or more extreme than the sample result given that the null hypothesis is true. That is why in this case, if the p-value is less than or equal to the level of significance, we need to reject the null hypothesis. And if the p-value is greater than the level of significance, then do not reject the null hypothesis. The steps in the p-value method are shorter because we just need to identify the p-value and the level of significance to make a decision. After stating the hypothesis and identifying the claim, we need to compute the test value to get the p-value. By comparing the p-value and level of significance, we would be able to make a decision about the null hypothesis. A while ago, I have mentioned the decision rules for rejecting the null hypothesis in the p-value method, but here's a more detailed guidelines. If the p-value is less than 0.01, reject the null hypothesis and the difference is highly significant. If the p-value is greater than 0.01 but less than or equal to 0.05, reject the null and the difference is significant. If the p-value is greater than 0.05 but less than or equal to 0.1, you can still reject the null hypothesis, but you need to consider the consequences of type 1 error. If the p-value is greater than 0.1, do not reject the null hypothesis and the difference is not significant. And that's all for this video. If you want to learn more about hypothesis testing and how to identify the appropriate test for a particular study, then please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for listening.